One of the first things I like to do when I start working with new parents is to help them get clear about how addictive behavior affects the entire family system. I have this presentation I call the eight-second lecture on chemical dependency. It goes something like this. Here's the addict. Here's the addict's chemical. Addiction is this person's life begins to revolve around the use of the chemical. It's that simple. My experience is that usually by the time I'm done drawing this circle, family members are starting to nod and they say, yep, that's it. And then I'll say, since we save so much time on that, we can move ahead to the eight-second lecture on codependency, which goes something like this. And unfortunately, this person has other people in his life. And the eight-second lecture on codependency is these people's lives begin to revolve around this person's life, which is revolving around the use of the chemical. What kind of day these people have depends on what kind of day this guy has, which depends on his relationship with the mood-altering substance at the time. They are, in a sense, codependent. And that's codependency at its most base definition. You can't argue with that. And again, it's my experience that when I draw that second circle, family members start really nodding. They really get that one. You may be having that experience right now as you're seeing this for the first time. But we also need to go a little further and take a look at what's going on emotionally here. Anytime there's an addiction in a family system, there are going to be a lot of unresolved feelings that can easily end up getting displaced. The people around the substance user are going to be angry, they're hurt, they're scared. Some of them might be feeling guilty or ashamed. And again, those are just the feelings that are directly related to the substance user. But then there's also going to be a lot of stuff going on between the individual family members. The diagram here shows a real common dynamic we see when the client's a teen or a young adult, and that's the parents who aren't on the same page as far as how they're dealing with the issue. You know, one's usually the tough guy and one's usually the enabler, and that can end up causing some pretty significant problems in their relationship. Or on the other hand, if the substance user is an adult in the family, there's a ton of different ways that relationships are damaged. Kids might be mad at the other parent for allowing the problem to continue. Or the kids could be mad thinking that the other parent's being too mean by making mom or dad go to treatment, and they end up choosing sides. And then it's not uncommon to see that kind of alignment or triangulation go on throughout the family. Adult siblings stop talking to each other. In-laws might chime in with their opinion about what's going on. So you see what this can end up looking like. Then we can't leave out the person who's actually at the center of all this. Even though they're identified as one who's causing all the problems, they've got feelings too. They're probably angry, mostly because of how the people around them are responding to their behavior. But underneath that, there's a good chance they're scared because on some level, they probably realize that they keep messing up and they're not able to stop. And they're not sure that they're ever going to be able to change. Add to that then, they probably got some guilt and shame about their behavior, but they're sure not going to let on to that. Then there's the underlying issues that might be the whole reason that they're using in the first place. And the bottom line is, this whole family system becomes just a mess of unresolved feelings. And that's what we've got when a family enters into treatment. And so the value of this eight-second lecture on codependency is that while it might not be real pleasant to see it there in black and white as to what's going on in the family, it at least offers an explanation for how we got there. And with that explanation comes a solution. And you can see by this illustration that the first thing for the family members to do is to step back and remove yourself from this dynamic of being controlled by unhealthy behavior. A lot of you have already taken the first step in this process by addressing the problem and helping your loved one get into treatment. That's a good beginning, but it's not taking back your control completely. This is going to continue to get tested as you deal with different situations over the course of treatment. Ultimately, you're going to see that it's a process of you learning how to identify, set, and maintain healthy boundaries.